next one because we've got some great content coming up. Um, I'm going to introduce our panelists here. Jim Hackenberg, he's our PGA professional from the East Coast. And everybody probably knows Jim. He's the creator and developer of the Orange Whip. He's in the Carolina section. And the reason we have these two together today, they both play golf at Arizona State University. Um, Burke, he's from our West Coast. And thanks for joining our team, Burke. He's in the Northwest PGA section. He played golf, like I said, at Oregon State University. And he was a first team all Pac-12 along with someone you may, may have heard of, may have not heard of, Tiger Woods. So um, glad to have Burke with us. He also won one of the bigger tournaments out west uh, a while back, the Pacific Coast Amateur. So he's a stick. They both can play. Um, and, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about rhythm and balance, which is kind of the backbone of the Orange Whip. Um, but we're also going to dive into what's in the middle. And by the middle, I mean your brain, what's in between your ears. Um, you know, there's a kind of a two different sides of the brain, the left brain and the right brain, and people kind of learn differently and play golf differently. So we're going to kind of take that control side, the analytical side, which is the left brain, and kind of tie it to the right brain, which is the creativity and, and passion and, you know, what do we do with the learnings and the preparation? How do we take it to the golf course? So right now I'm going to pass it off to uh, Jim and Burke and they're going to take it away um, and we'll see you guys in a little bit. Hey everybody, Jim Hackenberg. Burke Nelson. Jim, thanks for letting me borrow the pants. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey everybody, this is a, we're excited about this webinar today. You know with golf there's always been a few different ways you can approach the game and going back into my history of golf, I was very analytical. When I first started the game when I was 13 years old, I read a lot of books. I studied the game through golf magazines. And I got all these technical ideas going. Well, the problem was it got too technical. It got too controlling. It wasn't up until I was able to caddy on the PGA Tour from 2003 to 2005 that I started seeing the rhythm and balance of a golf swing. So I was able to see a different viewpoint. I, I went from being very left brain to becoming more right brain. So I want to discuss some of the ideas that we've developed along the way, and we want to share these with you so that you can not only help your own game, you can help your students if you're a teacher, but also it's just good information to share because it's going to make the game more fun and more interesting. So with the Orange Whip, like I said, I developed this after watching tour players swing in perfect rhythm and balance. Now I'm going to first look at this from an analytical standpoint. We've got a weighted ball on this end, a counterweight on this end, and a flexible shaft, but this is evenly balanced. The purpose for that is when I am swinging it, these two weighted objects want to be in balance. If I start slowly swinging back and forth, allowing the pendulum to increase, my wrist will hinge to support the orange whip, but it's also getting onto a natural swing plane. As I repeat that, the orange whip wants to stay in balance. But let's say I do not follow that path or that plane. Let's see what happens to the orange whip. If I get a little steeper with it, it's really difficult to handle and it's going to pull me awkwardly off balance. Also, if I take the orange whip and swing it around my body, that's going to pull me off my center. So the goal is to find the balanced swing plane that keeps you balanced. Now, let's start to mold this into how we can use certain analytical aspects to the orange whip and the drills we promote, and then the creative right side brain that allows us to hit shots and be ready for action in a competition. So we're going to start with the orange whip drills. Now these drills are routines. If you do these routines every day, you're going to develop skills. And if you have these skills, when you do go to a competition or a playing aspect of golf, it's going to be much easier to produce great results. So Burke and I are going to do what we call the torso twist. And this is all so that we use the ground and the rotation of our upper body to create the power. We're going to feet shoulder width apart, extend our arms at stomach height, and I'm going to simply start by pushing with my left foot and then my right. And we're just going to rotate. Notice how our arms are traveling with our body and we're using our footwork, footwork to motivate this. By repeating this, 
You're going to develop a skill. You're going to loosen up your body, and you're going to become more coordinated. Now, we all know that there's a wrist hinge in the golf swing here, which is the extra lever to unload all that power. Well, let's learn this by using our right hand only. Take our hand, move it to the bottom of the grip, hold it in our fingers with our thumb on top. We'll then get into our normal golf stance. We'll balance ourselves and have the orange grip hanging. We'll push it forward and let pendulum move it back and through. Once you get it swinging, allow your footwork to continue moving so that you stay in balance. By repeating this, you're developing a beautiful swing plane that keeps you in balance. Now also, I like to recommend 10 to 15 swings on all these drills. We can also do the left hand. So if you put it in your left hand and swing it back and forth, you're going to develop the same hinging principles with the left hand as well. And by repeating it, it becomes second nature. So now, these are the warm-up drills for your body to get ready for the full swing drill. This is really how we're going to train our golf swing in a routine, in a simple manner. So again, so when we get to that right brain, we're, we're free to fly, and we're free to hit the shots we want. So we're going to get into our normal address position, hover the orange whip above the ground, and start very slow pendulum back and forth, waiting for the momentum here and here. I'm a big proponent of waiting for the momentum at the top, and into the follow through. If you can wait for it, then you load your energy and easier to unload that energy. Now, that's how we train our golf swing. That's how we loosen up our muscles and that's how we improve the coordination and the sequencing, but it's not really a golf swing. So let's just set up and we're gonna make a few individual golf swings with the orange whip. So we'll hover the orange whip, balance, and then we make a swing. Do it again. Smooth takeaway, smooth transition, nice full finish. So now we've transitioned from training into learning our golf swing. What we're going to do now is I'm going to have Burke demonstrate how we go from warming up and doing our drills into actually making this into a golf shot. So Burke, take us through what you will do after you've warmed up with an orange whip and then you have a, a different weighted club in your hands. Okay. So I always break golf shots down into three components. And so and I try to accomplish all three of these uh, before hitting a golf shot or when I hit a golf shot. And so the first component is I always try to see the golf shot that I want to hit. So I try to envision or visualize that golf shot. So it could be a, a low cut, could be a high draw, but whatever I want, a clear picture of what I want to do. Now the second part, so the first part is see it. Second part is feel it. So now I got to feel the swing that I need to accomplish in order to uh, achieve that visual goal. And so that's where the orange whip really is important because it helps you feel the different swing, the different tempos that are needed to hit different golf shots around the golf course. And that helps me transition to the final stage, which is execution or do it. So see it, feel it, do it. And so I'm going to do an example here with this driver. I'm going to step back. I'm going to have a, do a little visualization of what shot I want to hit. Now, uh, it's probably going to be 300-yard drive because I'm known for that. And uh, I'm going to step back here and see the shot that I'm going to hit. So it's going to be a towering draw. Uh, start just a little right of target and just kind of come right back in. So I get a good visualization of what that's going to do, even when it hits the fairway, how it's going to roll out. And so then I step up. I get a feeling. So this is that second part. I feel what I want to do. And this is where the orange whip comes in. I got that little tempo and timing that I want to accomplish. And there it is right there. And then the third part. This is where the rubber meets the road. Ooh, killed it. That was beautiful. Now, checking on my internal launch monitor, Hackman, we saw that that ball flew 281 yards, it had two yards of draw, and his smash factor was smashing. So we were able to see his motion delivering his club head into the ball, and making that ball fly exactly what he was visually seeing. So it was really quite interesting to watch us go from the training into the actual shot. Now, we're going to also use the Orange Whip products to develop a few other types of shots so that you can then therefore use your training, your routine, so that you can actually move into the creative shot making. So I'm going to move the orange peel into the hitting mat so that Burke can work on a few aspects of it that will allow you to better fully understand how to achieve these goals. 
So Burke, we're going to have you set up and hit a cut shot. Let's paint this picture first. We're going to have Burke hit a cut shot around a tree, and the pin is tucked to the right over a bunker. So it's a tough shot. So you really got to see and feel that shot. So what do you need to do, Burke, to create your mind to hit this 175-yard six iron, cut it at around a tree over a bunker? All right. Well, great. So we've already determined that there's three parts that I need to accomplish in order to execute this shot. And the first part is visualize that golf shot. Now, fortunately, the golf course has given me some really good um, uh, things to bracket that shot. So I got a good bunker out there. I got some trees to try to really frame this picture. Then I'm going to hit this cut shot into the green. So now that I got a good picture of it, I try to get a good feeling of the swing I need to make. Now, a cut shot swing is a little different for me where I'm really, I'm not thinking about a swing thought so much as I'm trying to get that feeling. And for me, it's the feeling of trying to get through the golf ball. And so I'm going to, I'm going to mimic that with the orange peel here where I'm going to step back on the peel and kind of mimic a ball below my feet. But I'm also going towards the back edge, which is really helping me get more weight on my left side, but really help me get through the golf ball where I can uh, get my center of gravity or my sternum past the golf ball and accomplish that, that cut shot. So I'm going to hit a cut shot here. Do a practice swing. Yeah, do a practice swing first. So now I got that feeling down. Step up and hit a nice little cut shot. Ooh, nice. The Hackman numbers are coming in. It flew 176. It had four yards of fade to it, and it basically it, it lipped over the right side of the cup. It was exactly the shot he was portraying. Now I'm going to take the orange peel out of there, and he's going to do the exact same set of procedures to get you so you can see it, feel it, and do it. Now, unfortunately, I can't have the orange peel on the golf course, but fortunately, I got the feeling locked in my memory of what I was doing on that peel to accomplish this golf shot. So it's not going to be a whole lot different. Play the ball in the middle of my stance, really off my stern, but once again, my goal is after I see the shot and I take the practice swing of feeling my body getting through there, it's just executed. So once again, I'm just trying to get my sternum past the ball or emulate that feeling I had on the peel earlier. Beautiful. He executed it perfectly. And you notice possibly on his follow-through, you could see him working the shot, shaping it, because he felt it in previous preparation for this. It's very interesting to watch because then you can see what he is doing to prepare. So when he goes into the shot, it's already been accomplished. He's already done it. He's almost just reacting. It's almost athletic in the way you react to something. Right. So I'm not so much thinking about a swing thought as I'm just trying to replicate a feeling. That's right. beautiful. Thanks. Now let's try, we're going to try now go to a high shot. Let's pretend that Burke has a shot over the trees. He's got to launch this six iron high, but he's still got to fly at 170, 175 to get over the trees and get to the green. So let's go through, Burke, when you're using the peel, mm -hmm. how you prepare for that. I'll have That's you great. Here. So when I get on the peel here, to mimic this, this shot that I want to hit high, I'm going to move myself up to the front of the peel and kind of get my weight more to my right side, but get this nice little shoulder tilt here that Jim's going to show you. And notice, when he's on this uphill lie, notice how his shoulders are tilted this way and his hips. That's going to make it a lot easier for him to create almost an ascending blow to the golf ball to create more height. So unlike that cut shot I had earlier where I was, I was getting a feeling of getting through the ball, on this shot I'm, I'm staying a little bit more behind the ball and trying to hit the ball. Even though I'm hitting on a descending blow, it feels like my club is almost ascending in a way. So I'm going to take a practice swing here. Nice. And talk to us about where your weight is now. or what? Because you had to get through it with your weight, but because of your tilt, how did that affect the swing there? Yeah, so I had to be conscious of still getting my weight through, even though I was staying behind the ball. So I didn't want to fall back, because that's going to encourage potentially a chunk shot, which is what we don't want when we want to hit it high. So I was just getting a feeling of getting my, keeping my sternum or my center of gravity behind the ball, but after impact of making sure that it gets to my left side. So once again, it's not so much a thought, but more of a feeling that I'm just trying to replicate. Well, let's have you go here, Burke, and we'll have you take a practice swing to feel. You go. Let's have you do it. Actually, let's have you walk through the whole process of the whole thing. It, feel it, yep. and do it. Okay. So once again, I got the, the see it part. So I see the gaw shot I want to hit. And once again, I got some really good, I got a really good picture frame here. Some trees on the right. And once again, I got that bunker out there. And what kind of gaw shot I want to hit. So now that I see that gaw shot, 
I want to feel it, and that's where the practice ring comes. And are you and you're adjusting your body as such? I am. Now I don't exactly have to make the exact same swing I'm going to do with that uh, with that actual shot. I'm just trying to get a feeling. So I'm just trying to get a feeling of what I want to do. And once again, I want to keep my sternum behind the ball, but make sure I get through it at the end. And so and then now that I've got the shot in my mind, and I've taken my practice swing and got the uh, got the feeling down. It's time to do it, Jim. I like it. The Burke, those are great numbers. That thing started out so high, it's from the hackman, from the internal hackman, that launch angle was way higher than he hit that lower cut. So it was interesting to watch the flight, but it also, because of that height, it's going to take a little distance off. It only went 171, but he cleared the bunker and it rolled up to within eight feet. So I think Burke's got a good chance of making that putt. So now in these full swing discussions we've had, it all breaks down to simple activities. Burke has broken it down to see it, feel it, do it. So the orange whip is the one way that you can feel it. Seeing it is what your mind, your creative side does. It imagines what's going to happen. Think of Jason Day preparing for a shot. If you're able to visualize that thought, it gives you something to work toward. With the orange whip, you can use it in your routines and your practice sessions to find a proper rhythm, balance, and, uh, and swing plane so that it's natural and easy to do. And then doing it is just trusting what you've practiced to get ready for. Exactly right. So, so the orange whip is really a gateway to allow you to go from that visualization to that execution. And so once again, we're just trying to find a feeling and replicate that feeling. Beautiful. Well, he, he knocked it up there 8 to 10 feet from the hole, so now let's do that. Let's transition towards the putter. Now with the orange whip putter, still has the same orange whip shaft, it's got the counterbalance, and it's got a very unique head design. The putter head has got a round face to it, therefore encouraging center contact. If you can make center contact with your putter, it will work much better. So with this orange whip putter, I'm going to have Burke first start by just slowly swinging it back and forth, just kind of finding the rhythm to it. It's different than a normal putter because of that shaft. So he's going to swing it back and forth and get a nice sequence, a nice rhythm. And Burke, talk to us a little bit about what you're feeling now with that. So what I really like about the Orange Whip putter is it allows me to really feel that the putter head loading or gathering and unloading. And so what I see in a really good putting stroke is when the head of the putter, the hands, the forearms, and the shoulders are all in a nice sequence. And the Orange Whip putter really gives me good feedback to allow me to accomplish that proper sequencing. Beautiful. Show us also, you had shown me a drill earlier about how when you're swinging the putter, you will uh, touch the counterweight to allow the, the swinging of the putter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I've had a lot of, of students, so when they putt, I see a lot of movement in the putter, especially in the butt end of the putter. And something I like to see is, is a pretty quiet butt end of the putter. This usually shows me that the putter is on a nice pendulum, and the hands are really soft coming through there. So a drill that I like to do is I just hold the butt end of the putter here, and I just go back and forth. So back and forth where I'm feeling that head load and unload, but once again, I'm keeping this butt end fixed. And I like that because in physics, if you're going to swing something, there is a point where it's swinging from. It's not being dragged. It's being swung. So it's a very simple but yet important feature when, when putting. So, Burke, let's have you hit three of these putts. And I'm just he's just going to basically do his setup, and that's where we go to analytical. As you can see, we have a line here that, that allows him to kind of square his body to that line. It allows him to get his putter set. But what we really want to focus on is the feel of the creative side of it, of the flowing motion. So you can mix together analytical with creative, and this is a nice way to do it. So Burke's going to hit three putts where all he's focusing on is that nice rhythm, that nice swing. Yeah, so once again, I'm just getting a good feeling for the putter head here. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and by continuing to putt, what you're going to do is you're going to develop this skill to a point where it's not even an issue that you think about anymore. It becomes second nature, like walking. Beautiful. Great tempo, great speed. That ball rolled end over end. All right, here's the big one. <laughs> and he does a practice swing to feel it. And he lines up, settles himself. 
and he relaxes his mind, allowing him to swing like that. So, Burke, let's now transition over to your actual putter, and let's bring it into an actual game time situation when a guy is putting and practicing in this capacity. Okay, so uh, I said earlier pressure's on, but now the pressure's really on. So once again, I'm going to go back to that three-part process that we are talking about earlier, which is to see it, feel it, do it with a, with a putt. And so once again, with a putt, it's not a whole lot different than a golf shot, other than it's not getting airborne, but now I'm watching the ball go across the green, and I can actually, I can actually see the line the ball is going on. Now, I don't aim at a spot left or right of the hole by a foot or three feet. I'm really looking at a line that the ball is going to travel. So I really try, the more detailed I get my, my visual is, the better I can feel it. So now I get a good visual on this putt. I'm going to step up here and get a feeling. Just like that orange whip putter, I just want my hands to be nice and soft and feel that putter head. And then a third part, execution. Yeah, Not too bad, Jim. <laughs> so that was a great set of, uh, of, again, this is like a routine. This is a, a, a way that you could practice your skills so that when you bring it into competition or just regular round of golf, it's more effective. Burke, you had spoke, we had spoke earlier about basketball and a routine. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that because if you have this routine, how does it help you perform? So sometimes I see a golf shot a lot like a free throw in basketball where, you know, you, your mind can come into play and it doesn't always help you. And so a great way of quieting your mind is getting it into a routine. And a routine really brings you into the present. You don't have to think about what this free throw is worth. You know, is it to win the game? Is it, uh, is it to lose the game if you miss it? You don't want any of those thoughts. So a routine really helps out with that. And then the three shots, the see it, feel it, do it, is really part of a routine. Now, just like a free throw where I see the free throw before it goes in, I take two dribbles. That's kind of the routine and feeling it and, and get the feeling. And then I execute. And same thing with the golf shot, where I see the golf shot, I feel it through my practice swing, and then I execute. Perfect. Now, finally, the last portion of the golf game that Orange Whip is uh, dealing with, we've dealt with the full swing, we've dealt with putting, but now we're going to get into chipping, pitching, and wedge shots. And we want to have a big shout-out to Stan Utley. If not for Mr. Stan Utley, we would not have this club, and I would still be chunking and blading chips around the green on a regular basis. But... I took, a, I took a nice lesson from Stan Utley. If you're not familiar with him, he is a PGA golf professional. He's a PGA Tour winner, but he is the short game guru to a lot of the best players in the game. He has worked with Sergio Garcia. He's worked with a lot of the, the great short game guys on tour, and his philosophy is very simple. And what's nice about it, it's different than what I had originally done and where I was very ineffective. He explained to me what I was doing in my full swing was not what I was doing in my short game. So he's now tied together my full swing with the short game. This orange whip wedge that Stan helped inspire, we still have the orange whip shaft, we have the counterbalance, and we have a 56 degree lofted wedge. This is like a nice sand wedge, and it's got 12 degrees of bounce. I'm going to show you how to use this device and how to use that bounce, which are the things that I was not doing previously. So when I take this orange whip wedge, before I hit a golf ball with it, I want to get a feel for it. And going back to what Burke had talked about with the orange whip putter, about it swinging, that's really our objective, is how do we get this end swinging and not this end, because the important end is this end to swing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get into my normal setup position for a short game shot. I'm going to stay fairly centered. I don't want to get too far tilted behind it. I want to stay centered with my sternum even or even a little ahead of where the golf ball will be. I'm going to then start by just slowly letting this head waggle back and forth. Because so I want to see it, I want to see it moving in a swinging fashion. As I get it going more, I can feel it swinging, and now my arms are incorporating. And then now with more momentum, my body is rotating. Now I'm able to let that bounce brush the ground. And by repeating this, it's becoming second nature. Now, had I been leading with my hands, it sticks. That sharp edge is going to stick into the ground, and it's not going to allow my club to go through. Learning to swing the club through and allowing the bounce to work for you will make it much easier to give you a little bit of room for error on those short game shots. So let me demonstrate. So I'm going to take a golf ball. I've been swinging it so that i got a nice feeling for it. But now I'm just going to set up, and I'm going to try to emulate that same exact motion. 
So I'm going to set this golf ball even with my sternum, if not even have my sternum slightly ahead. And then I'm basically set up and allow the club to do what it's designed to do. Now I'm going to do one more with that motion because repetition or a routine will allow it to become very comfortable for me. I'll set up, comfortable, shaft is fairly vertical, and I'm going to allow myself to swing and allow the club to deliver. Now, as you also may have noticed, I had kept the counterbalance close to my body. If it was way out here, I'd be dragging the handle. I want that club head to swing rather than be dragged forward. So, I've warmed up with the orange whip wedge. I will take my actual sand wedge, and I've got a shot of about 15 yards. It's off of a tight fairway lie, and it's over a bunker to a short pin. Not In the past, not my favorite shot but it's a shot I've become very comfortable with and that I can trust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see that shot, I'm going to feel it, and then I'm going to do it. So I'm going to stand back here. I'm going to take a look at my golf ball toward my target. I've already inspected the lie, so now it's really about just getting a feeling of almost lobbing a golf ball to a target. It's that kind of athleticism, that freedom that allows you to swing rather than try to hit at something. So I'm going to take uh, my normal stance. I'm going to make a couple of practice swings to emulate how much motion I need to get it to go that distance. Once I'm comfortable, I will go ahead and get myself set up, sternum at the golf ball, if not slightly ahead, comfortably balanced, shoulders fairly level, and once I'm ready, I let the club do the work. And here's the beautiful thing about that last shot. I actually probably hit behind it by three quarters to a half an inch, but because I utilized the bounce, it still was a direct hit to the golf ball, and it gave me that freedom for motion. So learning to use the orange whip wedge and learning to use a swinging motion so that the bounce can work for you, you're going to get some room for air, and you're going to eliminate a lot of those chunks and those blades, but you're also going to get, eliminate the yips. Do you have any additional thoughts to, uh, with the orange whip wedge? No, just once again, I want to reiterate that it's you know, to simplify a golf shot, it's really easy. You just kind of you, you see the golf shot, you feel it, and you do it. And the orange whip is a great transition to go from that that see it to feel it part or do it part, excuse me. And so you know we really want to just focus on that and, and trying to feel different golf shots, whether it's a cut shot or a big high draw, but getting that feeling down so you can really transition that visualization to the execution. And the best part about these orange whip products and these concepts, you can do this in the winter time. You can improve your full swing your short game, your putting in the comfort of your home or office if you have room to swing because all we're doing is training a motion, a balance, let's say, and when you have this nice rhythm and balanced golf swing for short and long shots, it's easy to replicate. So then you can spend all your time being creative and dreaming up the shots you've always wanted to hit. So that's going to be the end of our demonstration, but we've got a few questions that have been sent into the webinar, and we'd certainly like to... Uh, We'd like to answer some of those, and if you have any after the webinar, please send them in, and we'll, we'll respond through email or on Facebook. All right, first question, Jim. Can you carry an orange whip product in your bag? You could carry an orange whip that has the orange ball on the top in your golf bag because it is not something you would hit a golf ball with. So it does not count as a 15th club, but if you take it out and swing it during a competitive round, it is a two-shot penalty. But if it's in your bag, it's like an alignment stick. Same thing. You can keep alignment sticks in there, but if you take it and set it on the ground, it's a penalty. But with the orange whip wedge or the orange whip putter, because you have hitting surface on the, the head of those, you cannot carry those in a round unless you have less than 14 clubs. And so this next question, uh, I'm going to take this, Jim. It says, uh, I have a problem with releasing the club too early. What drills can I do with the orange whip to help with this problem? Well, it's a great question, but honestly... I feel like using the orange whip just on a regular basis is all you need to do to help release the club properly. And there's two aspects of the orange whip that are really going to help you accomplish this. One is because it's really flexible, it teaches you to wait for the club head or the whip at the top of the club. And so just slowing down your arm swing, your hand swing, allows your body to get through just a little bit sooner, which is great for holding off that release. And, and waiting on a little bit longer. Another thing is the orange whip is heavier than a normal golf club. And so because it's heavy, once again, it's going to promote a slower arm or hand swing 
allowing your body to kind of pull the whip through and get it through the ball. And once again, encouraging your hands to release later rather than sooner. There's a question we have. I see more and more orange whips in tour bags. How do the tour pros use the whip? Well, think of it like this. Sunglasses or cool clothes make you look cooler. An orange whip will make your golf bag look cooler, and when you're swinging it, you'll look definitely much cooler. So I'm believing they usually use it to kind of up their, their value on tour. They just look more powerful. I'll kid in the side. Actually, the tour pros who do use it, we have a ton of them using it. They're using it to warm up. They're using it to stretch, and they're using it to get basically their hands, arms, and body in the perfect sequence that they have when they're out competing. So it's a great way to stretch and get your rhythm, and it's just a great way to free up the right side of the brain. I mean, it's a, it's a nice way to allow the freedom of the motion to take over rather than being the 15-year-old the Jim Hackenberg who was so technical and so tight and had strong, tense grip. This allows me to relax, swing, and basically make a more natural athletic golf swing. So the tour pros are doing it to find that rhythm to start their day. Well, that's all the questions we've got today, but please send them in. We can reply through Facebook, and uh, we can get back to you with any of those questions and provide some great answers. Thanks for your time today. I think I had a lot of fun. Burke, hopefully you uh, had a great time. You had a good thing. All right, thank you guys for uh, for that great uh, webinar. We appreciate it. Um, just a few things here to wrap it up. Um, there's a survey that's going to be sent out to you here in an email, so take a few minutes. That helps us a lot with uh, future webinars and, and creating some valuable content and getting some cool guests on, so uh, that would be helpful. And the recording, you will also be able to download the recording. We'll send that out in, in an email. You'll receive that also on YouTube and social media, and we also have our contact information there, info at orangewhiptrainer.com, uh, or give us a call. We'd love to talk to you, uh, PGA professionals, golfers. Any questions you have, um, we'd love to hear from you. So also follow us on social media. Um, you can get a lot of great golf content there. We're constantly creating new videos and everything, so look for different videos and content on all of our social media pages and we thank you again for joining us uh, look forward to uh, the next webinar we have here in the next few months and we'll see you out on the golf course thank you everybody <laughs>